Hello and welcome into my attic. So for my first DIY, I'll be showing you how I made this very old looking packing box from this very new wine box. It was a Christmas present from last year and we still haven't drunk it yet. It's a very sturdy box and I like the shape of it. So the first thing I need to do is just glue the handle down because it keeps flapping and opening up. At first I thought I'd put some flowers in the bottom here uh, because I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about uh, decorating this box at this moment. So I just cut off the flaps here. So I knew that I wanted the box to be like a kind of an old wood colour so I painted um, two coats of white paint all over the box um, and it was, it could have done with three coats but I liked the patchy look of it really, like made it look older so I, I just gave two coats. This is it after one coat and this is it after two. So I'd like to stick some old documents onto the box but unfortunately I don't have any old documents so um, I'm going to have to try and make them myself. So I've pulled out these old, um, old labels from stuff that I've bought in the past. I played about on my computer trying to design something that would look good on the box and I just did these and I just printed them out on the um, photocopy paper. So this was a little diary from last year which I was going to throw out because no one used it and I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought I could use it on this project as like an old document and in the end I think it's the thing that looked the most uh, realistic and most authentic so I'm going to keep it for future projects now. Sometimes these labels have uh, like plastic backing or they're a bit thick so I'm peeling off the plastic um, backing from these labels before I stick them down. So to dye all my paperwork I'm just going to use coffee wash and one is a lighter coloured coffee wash and the other is a darker coffee wash. So now I'm just having fun dyeing all my paperwork, you know, just trying to make it look old, making some shadows here and there, darker here, lighter there, until I'm satisfied with the look. So this is a page of the little diary. So as you can see there's handwriting um, here but it's not really old handwriting, it's my handwriting and it's not even really my handwriting. I had to change my handwriting to make it look old and I'm going to show you how I did it now. So I studied some images of old handwriting because I have no idea, I'm no expert at handwriting, I know nothing about it. But what I did notice about this old handwriting that I was looking at was that the letters were very small and the long letters were very long and they were sweeping towards the right. Um, yeah, the letters that were long were like the letters T, Y, P, B, those kinds of letters. 
Um, so I gave it a try, had a practice, and it came out quite well. Uh, also, the nib of my uh, permanent marker was very, very fine. Um, I need a permanent marker to do this because um, I wrote on the page first and then I um, antiqued it with the coffee. So that is what you need to do um, to get this. I mean, my handwriting, I've never been able to do anything like um, in a project, handwriting or anything like that. I'm, you know, no expert whatsoever. So if you think that you're like that and you'd like to give this a try, just have a little practice, you know, study some old handwriting and just try and kind of copy it. That's what I did. And it came out really well. I was really pleased. It looks really authentic. <laughs> Here I'm just drying off the ink, even though it doesn't need it because it's a permanent marker, but you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Here I'm just working out how I'm going to stick them down. These are just panels for the side of the box. So these are all my pages and before I stick them down with like Mod Podge or wood glue and water, um, I'm going to splash them with some strong coffee. I'm not using anything special, just a paintbrush. Here I'm just gluing my papers to the labels. Now I'm going to begin to glue everything onto the box. For the thinner pieces I'm just using my Mod Pod and for the more thicker card I'm going to use hot glue. This is just a piece of corrugated card that I wanted to use to decorate the handle. So I want to add some rusty objects for decoration. So with this manila folder, I'm going to cut some strips and then I'll decorate it with a rusty effect. These black plastic hooks were on a packaging that I bought with some gardening gloves and I'm going to paint them rust as well. I'm going to roughen them up with sandpaper because it's smooth plastic. 
So here's a little trick that I do with a hair curler. Um, I'm going to paint this rust as well when I separate it from the sponge and then you'll see where I'll put it. Here are more things that I'm going to give a rust effect. Here I'm making up my rusty paint. I'm just using dark brown acrylic, a little bit of wood glue, just a couple of spoons of baking soda or bicarbonate soda and a little cornstarch and water to just loosen it up a little bit. So all of those objects I'm now going to paint with this brown paint. It has a gritty texture which you need to get the rust effect. So now I've painted everything brown, I'm going to dry brush over everything with orange and it really does give a rusty look. So here's my rusty metallic objects, pretend obviously. I'm using wood glue to stick on these hooks and so that my glue gets a better grip and will make them stick on much better, I'm going to scratch up the back of the hooks.
My wood glue dries very shiny, so that's the absolute last thing that I want. So if I see any glue peeping out, I'm just going to brush it over with cinnamon, which, as everyone probably knows, um, gives a nice rusty effect. So now that everything's stuck on at last, I'm going to go over the white box uh, with some brown antiquing wax and then just wipe off the excess with um, a napkin. So here is my antique box from the East India Company of London and I'm imagining it being salvaged from an old Victorian dock in the foggy East End of London. So here is the reveal and hope you enjoy it.